Hello, back with a new video today. I wanted to go over Zen Armor, or Sensei. Uh, it has a couple different names to it, but it is made by Sunny Valley Networks specifically for OpenSense to integrate next generation firewall capabilities into your router. Now, uh, Zen Armor is actually really good. Um, it's pretty straightforward with configuring, setting up, and it has different things to try and get configured best to your firewall configuration like for mine um my firewall is really overpowered so i have a core i7 with 16 gigs ddr3 ram and a 500 gig ssd um mine is a desktop it's not an actual dedicated router system but um uh, zen armor has configured my system so it uses the elastic search database gives me all the capabilities possible because it can handle it um, so I've, I've, uh, wanted to make this video because the past three days I've been using this, I've been using the home edition trial for Zen armor. It has been absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, it is missing a few features. They do have it in the roadmap at the moment. However, they are not, um, fully integrated into Zen armor just yet. However, there is quite a bit of features for website blocking, filtering, a couple of different things. Um, they have some pretty basic, uh, packet inspection, just checking out uh, what websites you're going to, um, kind of that proxy capability or uh, forward proxy, man in the middle, a couple different things you may call it. Um, but I want to get in, jump right in, and kind of show you how to configure Zen Armor, what it looks like, what you can do with it, and just some of the filtering things. So uh, we'll jump right in, I'll show you uh, some of these features, and uh, we'll get started. So here I'm currently in my Zen Armor status page and you can see I'm currently running engine version 1.1. It is filtering a lot of different packages coming in and out of my network. Not a whole lot's going in right now. Um, you can see disk usage was running and currently I have the cloud agent stopped only because I deregistered the cl uh, cloud agent from my cloud management portal. You can see right here I have the capabilities to manage all my routers, uh, a couple different their policies. Uh, this one does take some time, so I won't uh, typically worry on this just my, right now. But uh, as you can see here, we have policies right here. I can change them, add new ones. You can see I have app controls, web controls, and security features. Go ahead and can block malware, phishing. And for advanced security, they are currently working on botnet, different domains, and DNS tunneling. Uh, things like DNS over HTTPS. Um, I know Cloudflare offers that, so you may want to block that for your kids to prevent them from making DNS queries that may not uh, be so safe. So we can change different features here for security. We also have app controls here. Each of these are actually different folders. So we can go in, we can go to database. Maybe we don't want CouchDB on our network. We may not want Firebird SQL either. We can also block different proxies. So I have Kproxy, Mega, Mega, excuse me, Molvad, a couple different things blocked here. We can change all this. And then we also have web controls. So if we want to block ads, adult advertisements, alcohol, things like that, uh, these are all categories here. And if you also have your own categories you want to make, you can make those right here. And unfortunately, the home edition and above is the only thing that will allow you to make custom preset profiles for web controls. So if you are wanting to configure this in your own ways, uh, you will need a home edition or above. And right now, home edition is only $10 a month. Um, they, they do give you a seven day trial. They also have different features, like um, they allow you to do uh referrals so if you know your friends and you do a lot of your home lab stuff and you want to try out zen armor with your friends you can give each of your friends a referral code to get 10 percent back and use that towards your next bill or credit you can also add exclusions here so i have hubspot just a couple different things and then you can also add to blacklist and you can send that recategorization to uh, Zen Armor, so they may be able to look at it. Um, crazyshit.com is similar to LiveLeak. It is a new site. I have blocked it for many different reasons. Uh, I have not seen it in the blacklist just yet for app and web controls, hence why I've added it to this. And I have added it globally to go across all of my policies and different uh, 
reports and such. So we'll get right into it. I'll show you how to install it and get started. So in order to get started, you'll want to head to your router and then under system and plugins, make sure everything is up to date. It typically wants you to update your system at all times before you apply extra plugins. So once you have that good to go, you'll want to do os.sunny or dash. And this will be your repository for all Sunny Valley applications for Sensei or uh, Zen Armor, whatever you may want to call it. So once we get that set up, we'll go ahead and install it. It'll go through, update the catalogs and get everything going, and it'll be done. So give it a minute, go back to plugins, and we'll refresh our page. Now, sometimes too, you may not have all of the catalogs for the Sunny Valley repo. So once again, check for updates, make sure everything's good to go. It'll update all its catalogs. As you can see we're grabbing some, some things from Sunny Valley. And there we go. So now we can see, where is it, where is it? There we go. We have Sensei, Sensei Agent, and Sensei Updater. So at first, you will want to install your OS-Sensei, which will be Sunny Valley's Sensei or Zen Armor application itself. Once we install that, it'll give us an, uh, information telling us this is third-party software, not officially from the OpenSense repository. Okay, whatever. We'll let the firewall install it. And this may take some time depending on your internet speed. Okay, we are done. It is updating once more. Go back to plugins and this next step is optional, but only if you're wanting to register it with the cloud management portal you saw above. As you can see here, it's running again. Our database is being funky just because it's running on such a small system. But you can see Zen Armor detected zero and block zero potentially harmful activities according to your rules. We have no rules configured for this uh, firewall just yet. But you can see it's also given us CPU, disk, memory, and cloud node status. Each of these are actually Sunny Valley servers. So this will tell you um, their server uptime. Uh, the closest server that may be available for things such as rules, downloading them, updating different things. It'll also give us a traffic graph of what's going on and live sessions here to tell us what may be connecting. We let this load. Okay, we'll try that again later. <laughs> Anyways, so. Uh, Sensei may not appear here when you first install it, but once we install this, there's the Cloud Manager, which will be Sensei-Agent. We'll install that. That will be just ready to go. Once again, this is optional only if you're wanting to register it to the cloud. And once we are finished, we'll go ahead and reload. Or refresh our page. You can see now we have Zen Armor Sensei sitting in here. We'll go to dashboard. It'll start the system up. And because we have our previous configuration, it's going to immediately load that again. Now, with newer configurations, you will want to configure it. Um, I have it configured for routed mode, L3, reporting plus blocky with a native Nmap driver. You can go with emulated or you can try that experimental version. It will let you know here if you click the information, what's going on. And then you also want to configure interfaces. I have LAN and Wi-Fi because those are only protected once I want uh, because management and voice are only to a few different servers. They are very strictly firewalled off from um, accessing other things I do not want them to. I'm not going to worry about that. You can also exempt certain VLANs or certain IPs or CIDR ranges. It'll let you know uh, database. I go with Elasticsearch because my firewall is a bit more stronger. Um, if you have a smaller uh, configuration or a smaller uh, firewall, it will want you to do MongoDB. It doesn't typically give you the option to use Elasticsearch, as you saw with my Holinsky firewall. 
and we can also get new tokens we can also update our landing pages and a couple different other things here now if you're wanting to get started with your cloud management we will want to okay if you want to get started with cloud management dismiss this yeah 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 we'll go ahead and turn this on first should give you this page and you'll want to log in And once that is registered, it will let you know to add your firewall and what to name it. Once you add that firewall, it will let you know what's going on. As you can see, Zen Armor detected 70 and block 46 potentially harmful activities according to your rules. It'll let you know different hosts, what they may be uh, doing. It'll let you know the top threats, potentially dangerous 24 sessions. Park domain is 26, and undecided safe 16, with four of them being proxies. And as you can see, it's telling us that our database is currently running on Elasticsearch. We can see here, since this database is actually working, that these are all of our different things going on. Our router, or no, our access point actually is reaching out for domain name resolution. And it's wanting to know, you know, what's going on in the network, uh, different domains, stuff like that. I'll let you know here different threats as well that have been blocked you can see here I'll let you know it's blocked the start and end dates what the category is where it came from and what it is trying to access from source and destination port and then with blocks this will be typically your website blocks so as you can see my ps4 has been trying to reach out to updates to update itself make sure if everything's good to go uh, i'm not currently allowing that at the time uh, for certain reasons and then here, we also have web activity. You can see connectivity is checked at the static. This was probably from one of my Android devices letting, or uh, wanting to know whether or not we can actually access the internet. And we've allowed that under our category infrastructure services. And here, we also have DNS queries, letting us know that, okay, 47.10 has tried to reach out to 8.8.8.8 for mtalk.com and the interface for the VLAN 25 on BGE0. And then two, these are all of our TLS uh, connections as well. It is pretty uh, granular. It gives you a very nice interface uh, compared to just looking at your regular firewall uh, live view, which we can see right under log files live. So it is a bit better than this. I still like to look at this occasionally, especially with an auto refresh, but we could also we wanted to change our policies remotely. You have centralized policies. Basically, if you wanted to have all your firewalls on one policy and then change them pure uh, firewall, adding on to them. So we can go here to our default policy. We can say security. Okay, firstly, scene sites. We want to block that. And once we have that, we'll synchronize the firewall. And now we are good to go. So if we go back to Sand Armor policies, we go back to edit, you can see where is first sites that so may be under app control. Where is it, where is it, where is it? There it is. Potentially first seen sites is now blocked from our cloud management portal. Pretty straightforward. It's uh, pretty fun actually to kind of dive in, change different things around. You can also add different users you can change some of your configuration here, like if you have remote databases for Elasticsearch or MongoDB. You also have SQLite here, uh, your deployment mode, different interfaces to protect. You can also set security zones here, and you also have your subscriptions tab because I have a home subscription with this firewall. Here it is right here, and then you can also update your subscription if you have newer ones or firewalls with that one, like my Helensky if I had an additional key. And uh, you can also check out your documentation, other plans here. And we'll take a look at this. So they do have a free edition. Uh, it gives you network analytics, uh, threat blocking, applications control, as you saw. You just can't do some of the things like custom uh, protections. And $9.99 a month, you have your home, which is what I currently have. They do give you a trial for it. It's right here. You also have your Soho, uh, small office or home office. And then you also have business. This will give you Active Directory integration, commercial use if you have a lot of firewalls, uh, big networks, stuff like that. 
Um, you can see all of this here. Subscribe to it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I encourage you to look into it, see what you can do, and uh, have fun.